animation in After Effects becomes fun as you learn how to use the program. Adding animation is as simple as choosing and customizing a preset or adding keyframes, but animation can take a dull still image or video clip and turn it into something a Hollywood producer would be proud to claim. In this lesson, we'll learn how to simulate light, use the pick whip and work with expressions, pre-compose layers, create a track mat, and add even more animation using keyframes. You can simulate light to brighten or darken rooms in your composition or to give a real look to quick flashes of light, such as lightning. In our composition, we're going to light up the group of people who are setting off fireworks. To do this, first create an adjustment layer. You want to use an adjustment layer to create simulated light effects because all effects applied to an adjustment layer will also be applied to all layers beneath it. If you simply add an effect to a normal layer, the effect will only be applied to that layer. Create an adjustment layer by going to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. You'll now see the adjustment layer in your timeline panel. Now, using the pen tool in the Tools panel, create a mask around the area that you want to light up. Remember to select the adjustment layer in the timeline panel before using the pen tool. Otherwise, you'll just create a new shape layer instead of adding a mask. When you're finished drawing your mask, go to Effect, Color Correction, Levels. In the Effects Control panel, adjust the color channels. In addition, go to the Timeline panel and adjust the feathering for the mask. Now if you want to animate sudden bursts of light, as you would see with a lightning strike or the flash of a firework, add in and out points or adjust the layer duration bar in the Timeline panel so that the burst of light only lasts for one frame. Take a look at the way we illuminated the people. Before we go any further in this course, it's important that you understand what expressions are, as well as their purpose in After Effects. Using expressions, you can create relationships between layer properties. You can then use the keyframes from one layer to animate another layer. A property is something that helps define a layer. Opacity, scale, rotation, and position are all examples of properties. In turn, properties have values. If you set the opacity of a layer to 80%, then 80% is the value. Animation presets can use expressions. If an animation preset contains expressions instead of keyframes, it's called a behavior. The pick whip is used to create expressions that link the properties of one effect or animation to another. We're going to use it to duplicate an animation. To start, move the playhead to the beginning of your timeline. Next, select the little B layer in your composition. To apply an expression, Alt-click on a PC and Shift-Option-click on a Mac on the stopwatch next to the little B layer. We're going to Alt-click or Shift-Option-click on the stopwatch beside Position. As you can see, transform.position now appears in the time ruler for that layer. Make sure the transform.position expression is selected. Then click the pick whip icon. Drag it to the position property of the big B layer. The pick whip snaps when you release the mouse button. The expression now changes in the time ruler for the original layer property. What this means is that the position property value for the big B layer now replaces the position value for the little B layer. When you pre-compose layers, you can bind specific layers to form their own composition. You can then nest that composition in your original composition or even in another composition in another project. 
If you're new to After Effects, pre-composing layers might seem like a step that you don't need to take because it only takes up time. However, pre-composing your layers can actually save you time as you work on your project. It can also allow you to easily transport those layers and their animations into other compositions. Here are some of the uses and benefits to pre-composing layers. As we said, you can reuse the composition that you create. You can apply effects to the nested composition or the one you create by pre-composing layers. That way all layers in the nested composition change in the same way. And just like the source footage, if you make a change to a nested composition, the change is made to every composition where the nested composition is used. To pre-compose layers, shift-click to select the layers in the timeline panel. Go to Layer, Pre-Compose. You'll then see the Pre-Compose dialog box. Enter a name for the new composition and put a check mark beside Move All Attributes into the new composition. Put another check mark beside Open New Composition and then click OK. A track mat allows you to define one layer's visibility through another. When you create a track mat, one layer in the composition acts as the mat. This layer masks out portions of another layer. There are two different types of track mats in After Effects. There's a luma mat which makes everything white visible and everything black invisible, and gray is in between. You'll see what I mean in just a minute. The other type is an alpha mat. An alpha mat uses the layer's alpha channel to decide what you can or can't see. Let's show you how to create a luma mat. A luma mat is a great way to hide text or elements from one layer behind another. For our example, we're using Lesson 7 Asset 3 and then just creating some text on a new layer in After Effects. Now we have two layers. One is of a woman and the other is of a fictional company that she works for. We want to make it look like she's positioned in front of a white wall with the company's name. To do this, we're going to go to the timeline panel. The picture of the woman is our matte layer. We're going to create a duplicate layer of it by selecting the layer and then pressing Ctrl or Command D to create a duplicate layer. Now we need to drag the duplicate layer above the layer with the name of the company. Now go to Effect, Color Correction, Black and White. We need to darken the woman in the track mat as much as possible for a luma mat. In addition to making the duplicate layer black and white, we need to adjust the contrast by going to Effect, Brightness and Contrast, and adjusting the contrast. We also need to add a blur. Now we can go back to the Timeline panel. Click the Toggle Switches Modes button at the bottom of the Timeline panel beneath the layers. This will enable you to see the Track Mat column next to the layers. Now let's go to our Text layer. Click the drop-down menu in the Track Mat column and select Luma Mat. As you can see, the company name now appears behind the woman in the photograph. We still have a little bit of the text showing here, but that's easily resolved with a mask. Grab the Pen tool and draw a quick mask around that part. Now open the Mask Properties and change it to Subtract. Being able to animate using keyframes will be critical to your success with After Effects. For that reason, we want to discuss it again by showing you another example. For this example, we're going to further animate our B using keyframes. To start, we're going to select the B layer, and then click the triangle. Let's animate the opacity of the B as it moves across the screen. To do this, move the playhead to the position in the time ruler where you want the animation to begin. Click the stopwatch next to opacity. Now move the playhead to the location on the time ruler where you want the animation to end. Change the value of the opacity property again. 
we're changing ours to zero. What will happen is this, your animation will start where you added your first keyframe, and then the opacity of the B will gradually change until it reaches the property value you specified, at the location in the time ruler that you specified. In our case, our B is going to disappear as it moves off into the distance. You can keep adding keyframes to continue the animation. After Effects has dozens of effects that you can add to your layers. In fact, there are so many, it's not even possible to cover them all in a course. However, we want to cover a few so you can see how they work. For this composition, we're going to add a light ray effect. To add this effect, go to Effect Generate CC Light Rays. You can see the light ray above the top left of the flower. Now go to the Effects Control Panel where you can adjust the properties for the effect. After you adjust the properties, you can drag the anchor point to move the light ray wherever you want. Now it looks like the center of our flower has a ray of light coming from it. Now let's open Lesson 7 Asset 6 and add another effect. Go to Effect Perspective CC Sphere. Go to the Effects panel to adjust the property values. Now you have a basketball that you can make rotate. 